the earth on which we live is a combination of many kinds of landforms like the mountains, seas, oceans, plains, plateaus, forests, valleys, deserts and so on. You must have studied in class 6 how different the lives of people on the various landforms are. Also, we have studied about the maps of various places in the world. We have learnt about the symbols, directions on the maps and so on last year. So, in today's class of social studies, let us learn more about reading maps of different kinds. The maps help us in understanding the location of places, the distances, the climatic conditions and so on. Different kinds of maps convey different kinds of information about the various kinds of landforms and places. Students, I hope all of you have your atlas. When you go through the atlas, you will understand how many different kinds of maps exist and what kind of information it conveys. So, in the class, let's learn about the maps which shows heights. To begin with, Let's study about symbols. Do you remember having learned in class 6 about symbols that are used in the maps? The symbols are used in the maps to point any physical object on the map. Trees, houses, places of worship, railway lines, rivers, etc are some of the examples that are marked as symbols on the maps. Students, suppose you are asked to mark Delhi on the map of India. What would you do? To mark a place on a map, for example, New Delhi on India's map, a point is marked and labelled as New Delhi. A wave-like line is drawn to point the location of a river on the map. In case one has to point a railway track, a track line is drawn to point it on the map. In case one has to mark a region like Andhra Pradesh or Gujarat, a boundary line is drawn to represent the respective region. While places like temples, churches, cities and towns are marked with a point symbol, line symbol is used for marking rivers or tracks. The regions like states or districts etc are marked as area symbol. This is how the physical objects of various kinds are marked on the map with the help of a point, line or area symbols. Students, you must have seen maps written as physical maps in your atlas, isn't it? Now, let's see what physical maps are. Physical maps are used to show physical features and landforms and bodies of water. They are specially designed to show the geographic features of an area. Colors, lines and tints are used to show mountains, deserts or lowlands. All bodies or occurrences of water are marked on the map in blue color and the map shows whether they are streams, rivers, lakes or larger bodies of water. Mountains, deserts and plains all have their own unique color. Each color points out the variety of landforms on earth like the plains, mountains and plateaus etc. and depict the heights of the places on the maps. But students, how do you think is height represented on the paper? Let's have a look. In this image, one can see the hills, plains and a river. The height of the hills hides the places behind it. A map cannot hide the places. So, how do you think are heights shown in the maps? One way in which the heights are shown in the map is by using colors. Students, now let's have a look at how heights are measured on the land. Students, as we all know, the levels of the sea keeps changing with the low tides and high tides. In such cases, what is done? 
The levels of the sea are measured at frequent intervals and the mean or the average sea level is calculated. So the scientists have come up with the mean sea level, MSL, that is used to calculate the heights from the sea level. But students, why do you think the sea levels are used to calculate the heights on the land? As all the seas on the earth are connected to each other, the top surface or the sea level all over the world is taken to be the same. Hence, sea level stands as the basis for calculating the heights.